Even amid skepticism regarding Starship HLS's deadline adherence, NASA recently unveiled unexpectedly intricate testing moments for the critical elevator component of the Starship Lunar Lander. This test showcased the elevator's reliable functionality, affirming SpaceX's role in NASA's Lunar Lander program. While SpaceX remains transparent about its strides in Starship development at its Texas facilities, a notable contrast emerges regarding the company's approach to the Starship moon lander. This difference in disclosure methods raises intriguing questions about the Artemis mission's potential challenges, despite the technological advancements witnessed in Starship's development. As we embark on unraveling the contrasting approaches of SpaceX and sharing its Starship advancements, let's pivot our exploration towards the uncertainties looming over the Artemis mission schedule. This examination includes delving into the specifics of a recent elevator test and an analysis of how these factors might potentially contribute to setbacks. While SpaceX openly shares its strides in Starship development from its Texas facilities, understanding their comparatively reserved stance regarding the Starship moon lander sheds light on the complexities influencing the Artemis mission's trajectory. This specialized upper stage Starship is tailored to meet the challenges of landing on the moon and address the requirements for sustained human habitation. A vital component of this lunar lander is its elevator, a crucial element that allows astronauts to disembark and explore the lunar surface. Given that most of the upper stage Starship is dedicated to tanks or engines, it's likely that vehicles designed for Mars missions could also employ an elevator to transport crew and cargo to the surface. Recalling back the initial glimpses of the elevator akin to one utilized by NASA's Artemis crew for a lunar descent emerged in mid-December of 2023. These, these reveals included model testing conducted under standard atmospheric conditions. The initial test appeared stable, prompting NASA to progress to more intricate testing stages. This recent assessment involved evaluating the elevator's performance under simulated lunar surface conditions, showcased in a newly released video clip from NASA. The footage reveals two astronauts clad in spacesuits actively operating the equipment within in a simulated lunar environment underwater at NASA's esteemed Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, or NBL, situated near the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston. These simulated conditions aim to mimic the challenges of maneuvering on the lunar surface. Since 1992, this site has been the training ground for hundreds of spacewalks. Designed to replicate lunar conditions, this training area mimics up to 90% of the lunar surface environment. The pool floor is adorned with simulated sand and boulders engineered to imitate the regolith astronauts will navigate on the moon. To prepare astronauts for the sandy and steep slopes of moonwalks, panels are installed on the tank floor, creating inclines and declines. Weights and flotation devices are utilized to simulate one-sixth of Earth's gravity, mirroring the moon's conditions and enabling space-suited divers to train effectively in this environment. NASA is meticulously recreating the unique sunlight conditions found at the lunar cell South Pole. While NASA hasn't provided updates on the experiment's outcomes, this step marks significant progress for the Artemis mission and specifically the Starship HLS program. With the Starship HLS elevator being an essential aspect of NASA's astronaut training, it signals SpaceX's clear mission plans, aiming to meet deadlines and ensure safe operations for the upcoming Artemis 3 program. Despite opinions suggesting SpaceX's Starship HLS might hinder NASA's lunar program, recent experiments and previous successful tests like the Raptor vacuum engine test, the prototype life support module at Starbase, and ongoing refinements in Starship HLS design exhibit SpaceX's consistent work ethic. Their primary focus remains on launching Starship into orbit, paving the way for robust future developments. Given SpaceX's track record for speed and innovation, it's foreseeable that the new Starship HLS will swiftly follow the first Starship's orbital achievement. Alongside the attention on testing the elevator in a simulated lunar environment, there is also another noteworthy aspect, the spacesuits worn by the two astronauts. In fact, the spacesuits that the astronauts are wearing should, in theory, be designed by Axiom, the private company tasked by NASA to design lunar spacesuits for the Artemis 3 mission. But this was not to be. This indicates that the production 
and manufacturer of the suits are showing signs of facing many challenges, causing delays and not being able to perform double duty with the Starship HLS elevator. If the spacesuit development process slips, then it may delay the next moon landing even if the space launch system and the SpaceX Starship human landing system are ready, timing that has been called aspirational. One of the challenges we know about is the ability for emergency support required by NASA. NASA has mandated that Axiom develop an advanced spacesuit capable of providing a record-breaking 60 minutes of emergency life support. Axiom is facing challenges as the government reference design from NASA doesn't meet the requirement for storing the necessary amount of oxygen. Axiom is considering redesigning portions of the suit, particularly the life support system package. This may involve shrinking the size and reorganizing components to accommodate larger oxygen tanks. Alternatively, if this proves unfeasible, Axiom is prepared to modify the existing life support system, although this would entail additional time. As Axiom grapples with potential redesigns for the suit's life support system, the next hurdle emerges in the form of critical technologies. Axiom, in its mission to meet NASA requirements, aims to mature critical technologies such as the life support system and pressure garment system. As part of January of 2023, NASA evaluated these systems at technology readiness level 4. Axiom's assessment revealed that over half of its critical technologies were below TRL-6, with the regenerable CO2 scrubber rated at TRL-3 due to deviation from the government reference design. NASA expects critical technologies to reach TRL-6 by the August 2024 critical design review. However, as of May of 2023, both the life support and pressure garment systems had not significantly advanced since January of the same year. Axiom had planned to conduct a crew capability assessment for the pressure garment system before the November 2023 preliminary design review. Human testing of the life support system is scheduled for CDR in a NASA vacuum chamber facility. To mitigate supply chain risks, Axiom plans to produce some components in-house. However, NASA officials caution that using a different source may decrease TRL, requiring reassessment due to uncertainties associated with a new manufacturer. Components with design changes are also rated at a lower TRL and must be matured for use in the Artemis 3 mission. Furthermore, Axiom faces potential delays in developing and procuring components for spacesuits, risking the compression of its delivery window to NASA to less than two years by September of 2025. Critical components, particularly those supporting the life support system, have long lead times of 12 to 18 months for procurement. So Axiom is forced to plan to outsource certain parts, such as oxygen regulators, but it's also challenging due to the limited number of specialized suppliers. For those who have been waiting for humans to walk on the moon since the last time it happened over 50 years ago, another delay would be maddening. As Axiom navigates the possibility of delays in suit component development, the potential compression of its delivery window to NASA looms on the horizon. However, these challenges aren't exclusive to Axiom, as even NASA's HLS program grapples with significant risks concerning software and hardware integration with the Orion program. The HLS system utilizes software spread across various hardware systems, making comprehensive end-to-end -end software testing on flight-like hardware in mission-relevant environments challenging. Although agreements have been made between the Orion and HLS programs to share emulator and simulator hardware and software, concerns arose in July of 2023. NASA documentation reveals that the HLS development pace is not aligning with Orion program integration milestones, potentially jeopardizing the planned December of 2025 launch readiness date. The integration of software developed for diverse hardware platforms, operating systems, and heritage software poses challenges and the risk of introducing defects. HLS risk documentation underscores the need for adequate test facilities and campaigns to avoid the late discovery of critical software defects during integration and testing with flight hardware. The absence of thorough testing may lead to missed critical software defects resulting in potential cost overruns, schedule delays, or, in the worst case scenario, mission or crew loss. As we conclude today's exploration of the Starship HLS program and the 
the challenges ahead, uncertainties loom over NASA's lunar mission. Can Axiom overcome spacesuit development hurdles and meet NASA's stringent timeline? The compressed delivery window poses a risk, potentially delaying the moon landing. Additionally, software and hardware integration risks with the Orion program could affect launch readiness. Will agreements between programs suffice, or might they lead to unforeseen complexities? These uncertainties cast a shadow on the Artemis mission's success, urging us to ponder the path ahead in lunar exploration. Well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please remember, your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section down below. Otherwise, we thank you so much for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.